<laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> You're sardonic humor. Great, man. Uh, I'm at a grocery store because I no longer have cell phone service at home, so if it sounds weird, that's uh -huh. why. Alright, well, so are you in the middle of shopping? No, I'm, I was sitting here using the Wi Fi. Oh, okay. How are you doing? Alright, man. I, I love your rap about me being an agent. <laughs> it's hysterical. That would certainly make a funny movie. What? <laughs> what? what I, I bet that part isn't author, authorized in the, uh, in the film you're making, though. No, of course not. I mean,. You know, I, I talk a lot about Janice, but I was with Janice quite a, quite a while before she passed away. Um, don't ask me the dates because I yeah, don't yeah. remember any of them. But uh, no, I mean, I, we were lovers for uh, almost a month. Yeah. A little over three weeks, which is probably the longest heterosexual relationship she ever had, really. She wanted to get married. I said, no, Janice, I want to remain your friend. <laughs> Are you, are you the guy she met on the on, while she was hiking? <laughs> no, no, I met Janice sitting behind uh, Jerry Garcia's amplifier on on stage, and um, I was performing a piece called "Waterbed Friend or Foe" about a sleepless night on a waterbed, <laughs> and and uh, uh, from behind the amplifiers, just before I actually met her, right? I hear Janice say, I hate fucking water beds because you can't fuck on them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the audience roared, <laughs> you know, it really roared. And that was when the water beds was the big thing, you know, everyone had one. Yeah, right. I got one on the tail end of that, but I, I hear they were big in the 60s and 70s. Oh, uh, it, was, it was a short-lived uh, passion because, like she said, you can't fuck on them. <laughs> yeah, they... Much less They're more of a fad. During the piece, of course, I'm laying on a stage. I'm not. I don't use any props, right? So, so to create that liquidy, you know, surface was not easy. <laughs> um, but you know, it, 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 it. So every time my hand would fall off my side, on my, and it would hit the mattress, and I'd go. <laughs> sleepless night. It was funny. Funny piece. <laughs> Anyway, uh, yeah, so that was that was when we were together. It was it was amazing. Because, but did, uh, didn't you say in a post that you were talking to her right before she went to Texas, where she died? Oh, yeah, we were. Yeah, we were friends. We were friends to the end. You know, uh, we just were lovers for only a month. That's about. It. Uh -huh. uh, but you know, I mean, I, I came back to her place one day, and she was in bed with that bitch. I can't remember her name, but she's the one who kept bring, bringing the heroin to her. And uh, they said, oh, come on in, let's have some fun. And I'm seeing the rig on the table, and, you know, the spoon and all that shit. And I'm going, oh, no, man. Not even tempting. Yeah. See ya. You know. So, uh, that was the end of that, as far as that episode. But we became good friends. Like I said, if I don't marry you, I'll be your friend, you know. <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you one of my fondest memories, and this is just between you and me, it's in the movie, but uh, one of my great memories is uh, waking up in the morning in her bed, and she's at the bottom of the bed, standing up naked, with, except for this purple boa wrapped around her, and she <laughs> sings ball and, ball and chain just to me, man. Wow. Wow. That's a memory. I will, that's, that's one of the moments I'm going to experience when I leave this planet. Yeah, I oh, bet. <laughs> That was that was an amazing experience. Yeah. Wow. But no, she she, she was a complicated lead, and I told her not to go back to Texas because those people treated her like shit when she was a kid. She was a pariah in her hometown. Well, and, she uh, was in her hometown. I thought I she I thought she I thought she died in in a hotel in Austin. She no, went back to her no, home. No, no. She died in her hometown. That, I'm not sure about because to tell you the truth I saw her two weeks before she died and she told me she couldn't hit those top raspy notes anymore and it was all over and uh, she said if I can't reach those notes anymore I'm done you know spoken like a true blues woman you know and she's just uh, she said at least I won't have to grow old and used up 
Oh, so you, you basically got a suicide story from her that she was planning to die. Right. Exactly. And it, I mean, what am I going to say to her? I mean, I, I respected her intelligence, and I, I, if she thought that was what she wanted to do, then she's an adult. Yeah. Not a young kid, a teenager, is trying to kill himself. I'm going to try and talk him out of it. Like, what do you know about life, man? Kill yourself, you know? To yeah. turn your back on life? What do you know? You know, like, that's what Jimi Hendrix is talking about when he's talking. He said, are you experienced? That's what that whole philosophy was behind that music. So were you there for his last words, too, or just uh, just, no, just no, Janice I, and Neil? I have a picture of me uh, rehearsing with Jimmy in full costumes. I had to let Electric Lady Land as a recording studio. And we worked, uh, <clears throat> worked together four or five times. And then he said, I got to go to England to fire my manager. Because he's uh, took, taken out a multi-million dollar life contract uh, on, on me uh, with uh, the insurance company. And he said, uh, I'm going to go fire his ass. And the next thing I know, he was, he was dead. So you talked to all of them right before they died. Holy shit. You really are the Grim well, Reaper. Well, there, there is no. Actually, what I am is, is the guy who's, who's waiting at the next door. Hope they pay well for that. That's what Merlin's about, man. I mean, uh, you know, that's I'm what I'm. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. You show up in the face paint, yeah. and everyone, all the, uh, everyone knows that that person's about to go. I did do to, to catch a butterfly. The guy kills the butterfly by falling in love with it and handling it. You know, once you take the dust off a butterfly's wings, it's finished, right? So it's about man's. It's cool came all the way from the golden age of Greece it's about man's ignorance to the needs of nature I think it's you about know, the CIA wet team taking out peace <laughs> activists left right and sideways in the 60s I mean Jimi Hendrix was that, murdered man more sophisticated now. now they get you to kill yourself yeah I'm well I guess they did that with Janice didn't they no Janice Janice it was entirely her choice. I, I, she was always very careful about the amount of dosage. And That's what I hear. Really, really no, careful, she, she, which is weird because yeah, I... She was very careful about that. And I also I, heard she was really way, into the peace movement. Her, right. Well, when I was with her, she didn't use heroin at all. She stopped. Yeah. And that was, I consider that very complimentary because she really wanted to absorb my company and not just nod it away, you know. But, uh, yeah, and I've never been a big drinker either. I'd have a nip on her Southern Comfort once in a while, but that wasn't really into Part of the reason I'm still here today is because it wasn't into drinking. Yeah, no. Same here, yeah. man. I don't need the alcohol. No. I have a, my great-great-grandmother uh, on my mother's side was a Hopi medicine woman. And oh, yeah? Whatever that, whatever that gene is in the Indians, yeah. I got some of that. Yeah? And doesn't go well with booze. Just, my body says, what are you doing to me? You're, I'm a temple, god damn ya. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting because in a way, you brought up something interesting that made me think about it was, I was kind of an agent for the underground in that sense, that that I, I, I was into infiltrating circles that I normally wouldn't in, infiltrate myself, and I would pick up the information I needed and move on. That sounds yeah, like a, a, what what I'm accusing you of. It absolutely is, but it's for our side. <laughs> to find the our side. The underground, the, the people. God damn it, what the hell do you think I'm talking about? Is I don't know, man. I don't think there was anyone on that prankster bus who wasn't working for the CIA, man. You really believe that? I honestly believe that. And your behavior since the day I met you has not done anything but enforce that. <laughs> well, then you're taking chances talking to me. I guess I have to I, you Believe me, I'm past chances, bro. I'm so past chances at this point, and you're past caring. <laughs> so that's what makes this fun. Absolutely. But here's my confession. You ready? Sitting in a grocery yeah. store. But, uh, so... 20 years, well, since cell phone technology made it possible, I tape everything. So all of our conversations, 
Th this is the fourth. This will be conversations with Merlin part four. But the first, the first one. You the, told me about this at first. Yeah. No, why would I, man? That you would, it would have gone much differently, bro. No, no. I'm a professional, man. I, I'm, I'm well, that's a, that's my that is my thesis is that you're a professional. Yeah. Professional. Very proud. Of very. It uh, takes thirty years, thirty years of hard work to become even decent as, at pantomime. At least, most people don't have that kind of patience. Yeah, no. I mean, you you treated it like a like a career. It was. It was, and I was collecting cash for most of that career. And now, now that I'm collecting Social Security, I get eighty eight dollars a month. <laughs> eighty eight. You know, I've been outside the system, huh? Eighty eight. Eighty eight for what? For my Social Security check. How do you only get eighty eight for Social Security? They take out uh, over half of it for Medi-Cal and Medicare. Wow. That's... But I worked, like I said, I worked for cash most of my life. Whenever Bill paid me or, or Chad or any of the promoters, they paid me cash. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't paying taxes then. I wasn't paying attention to taxes. Yeah. And I certainly didn't expect to grow old. <laughs> so here I, here I am with 88 bucks a month. Mmm. <laughs> But you know, no complaints. Well, the, less is more, my friend. Well, less well is the more. reason I was tell I was confessing this is because if there's someone making a movie about your life, the footage I have is fantastic because it's not you. When you get in front of a camera, you become a character. But when you're talking, no, no, wrong. well, no, no. you you when they're talking when they're talking to Merlin or Joan McCord, who doesn't have white face on, I'm just a guy. You know? No, but you're you're Merlin. But I, I I have what I'm saying is that I have fantastic, deep metaphysical conversations with Joseph, not Merlin. And that just as a filmmaker, when he gets into the editing room, what I have is a gift for him because it you know um, you obviously would have to approve it, and I'm gonna send you the link so you can look at it and make sure it's nothing you're embarrassed of, and it's it's not public. I I. I've hidden them on my on my YouTube page, and I kept it unlisted until I talked to you, just out of out of reverence to you. But the footage, because you and I have had these great conversations, deep metaphysical. The first one was forty five minutes. We're already thirteen minutes into this one. The third one's the best because you got really. We were. It was late at night, and we really were getting philosophical, and it was it was great. But. What I'm saying is, is I'd like to give it to your filmmaker if he'd like it, just so he'll. He'll. I'm gonna send you the links so you can look at them. Uh, I'll share. Them with, I'll share them with him. And then because I still have the 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 file on my full on my computer are huge because I did it at at, at a full uh, resolution. But I I don't know if you saw the episode of my web series where I my grandson to protect his identity I turned him into a cartoon. And I'm gonna practice. I'm gonna pr I'm, with, with, with your footage. If I did the same thing, it would be really because it would look like you have the face paint on. In the conversations with me talking metaphysical, and I'm gonna just play around with the footage. Now that you know that it exists, I'm gonna. I'm about to get snowed in. We're about to get a snowstorm, so I get the next like three days stuck in my apartment, and I'll be playing with it. And I'll uh, when I emerge, when, when the roads clear and I emerge, uh, I'm gonna give you some. Some footage to, to to enjoy because you really are a character, yeah. one way or another, man. If my leaving my uh... if you ever go public, <laughs> uh, if you ever go public, you're gonna have to call yourself Seth Speaks. <laughs> That's been done though. I think I'd have to pay residuals to whoever made that. Uh... <laughs> uh, how about how about, uh, how about uh, Seth has spoken? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good name. But that's a great book too, Seth Speaks. No, I never read it. Never got a chance to read it. Oh, you should read it. Man. Yeah. Go identify. <laughs> well, my eyes. I haven't been able to read a book in a while. The uh, the last eye you doctor I went to. You know, you know what Keezy used to say to us? Huh. He said, "Great books are made to be written, not read." <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. He was not a big reader. He was not a big reader. Yeah, I don't have time. I mean, I'm too busy telling my story. 
Right. Right, man. Well, that's that's good, man. Uh, you send those things down, and we'll see if we can get get into the movie, man. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll, like I said, give me a few days. Um, everything's falling apart for me here. I'm about to move out of my apartment and basically sell my car, take a bus to New York City, and uh, see what happens from there. My hometown, man. Oh, yeah? Oh, I didn't know that. New York? Yeah. I was born in Hell's Kitchen. Oh, nice. On the waterfront. Nice. My first step was a dresser drawer. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I've made myself, man. Well, I was bringing the rent home when I was seven, you know. You were what? I was bringing the rent home when I was seven. How? What were you doing? <laughs> well, uh, thanks for the card, you know. Mm. How sweet it is. I had to puff that. Thank you for loving me to with you in a minute. Um, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, How you paid the rent at seven? Numbers. I was running numbers for the 12th Avenue gang in the mob. Alright, man. Right? Wow. Uh, I was in that gang. I was seven years old, but it was one of the leaders. <laughs> so I was making my life on, on crime, right? Yeah. So one day I can't keep up with the other kids on my littler bicycle because they were all older. Um, I got tired. I was in front of a big courtyard with, that was gated. And inside that courtyard was a little old man with white frizzy hair playing the violin sitting next to a table and a guy in black watching his back so he comes over he sees I'm tired he comes over and in a thick Yiddish German accent he says you look tired would you like some tea so he invited me in for tea now I had no idea who that was until I was 12 years old and saw his picture on the newspaper can you guess who that was no. Einstein. No. True story. What? True story. Well, one, one, one of my I had visited him like five or six times. Um, it, well, I, I reflected him being an old man playing the violin. <laughs> that's, that's a side of Einstein not a lot of people know. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, but he, you know what he said? Huh. Gott and Franken. He says, I thought there were only two universal languages, mathematics and music. He says, you have shown me a third one. He was impressed. And he said, you're a gifted young man. He says, you should not make a life of crime. He said, go get a job at a television station. <laughs> Next thing you know, six months later, I'm at CBS. Walk in. The guard says, what do you want, kid? I said, a job. You know, a tough New York, you know, <laughs> ganger, you know. But that's that side of me. The other side is the pantomime. So, so the guy said, well, what do you do? So I immediately reflected him being condescending to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, he got it, man. He hook, line, and sinker. He said, wait right here. He says, he says don't go away. I want you to meet somebody. So he comes back out with uh, oh, most of the, some of the great television stars of that era: Sid Caesar and Imogene Coca. Um, oh, I can't even think of. I'm having a senior moment. <laughs> uh, oh God! Completely lose me. Anyway, um, they saw what I did. They gave them some, a performance. They were in the lobby, and they said, "Come right this way." And uh, they said, "It's not legal for us to pay a kid to <laughs> perform." So Ernie Kovacs, Ernie Kovacs was the guy who took me under his wing. Oh wow! And and I didn't know this about him at the time, but he his wife had uh, kidnapped two of his children. He loved his kids. Oh my God! So he was a tortured soul because of that. Yeah. And he, he would, when, before I would do the shows with him, he would take me out for ice cream. You know? Uh, this is when, you know, all those guys put their money back into the shows. Oh, wow. They didn't depend on commercials so much, you know? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so 
So he says, I'm going to get dressed in this little monkey suit. <laughs> so I became part of the Nairobi trio. He played bongos on my head. <laughs> Is there footage of that in the film? Uh, I'm, I don't know. I, it, they I, should, I don't think they did get... If that, they should oh, find that, man, you that's... Gotta, you got to so, understand something. This is before television. This is before, I mean, before tape on television. Oh, now, yeah. They, like, it was all, like, done live. Like, there's no tape of it. <laughs> it, was a, it was live television, dude. Wow. You made one mistake, and, you know, four <laughs> million, five million people knew it. Wow. Of course, we would love the mistakes, but then we turn them into something else. Yeah, yeah. That worked, <laughs> you know? Well, but that was yeah, part so of the I genius mean, of it, yeah. So, so the, uh, he was, he was pretty connected with the, uh, the underworld, you know, the crime families. And they called him up and told him when the government inspector was coming to, to the station. And Ernie would come turn to me and say, quick, get in your monkey suit. <laughs> <laughs> what? I kid you not, this is all true stuff, man. So I get in my monkey suit, and the government guy comes, and he, of course he looks at me and he says, who's that? And, and Ernie says, oh, it's just some midget we hired. <laughs> oh, wow. So, with all of Hollywood having midgets pretending to be children, you were a child pretending to be a midget. <laughs> it's like a reflection, man. Yeah. Um, a pantomime. You know, yeah, that's what it is. It's about being a mirror, really. People see themselves in me and in this everyman thing, and they identify. I remember once I was performing at the cannery in San Francisco, they had this little stage there. I don't know if it's still there. And uh, I was performing a piece about Vietnam called Hero. It was about a, a, a uh, veteran amputee morphine addict assassin. <laughs> and I played, and I yeah, checking into his hotel room, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, he shoots up. He has, yeah, has a flashback uh, Vietnam. And, um, so I'm at the, uh, my zero object sink, uh, bathroom sink, uh, puking in the, in the sink and hating my image in the mirror. And down below, with, right on the ground, in front of the stage, just below where the, the sink would have been, was this guy going, oh shit, oh fuck, oh no, no, no. I mean, he's really upset by what I'm performing. And afterwards, he puts, uh, Two five hundred. Back then, they had five hundred dollar bills. Put two five hundred dollar bills in my hat and said, "I'm a major in the Air Force in Vietnam." He says, "I fly missions every day to bomb North Vietnam." And he said, uh, "I didn't realize the reality of what I was doing until I saw what you did here." And he says, "I'm going AWOL. I'm not going back." What? Wow. Yeah. The power of art, brother. Yeah, wow. I was very proud of the fact that he had made that decision. He was very generous to it and never made such a big tip in my head. Yeah, wow, it's a lot of money back then. Yes. Well, you know, $500 like, was a lot of money when there was a $500 bill. <laughs> right, there you got it. Except when there was actually gold in Fort Knox. Yeah, there you go. Wow. <clears throat> but, you know, that's, that's the journey, man. Um, and I'm in the twilight of that journey right now. Yeah. Well, you're you're having a hell of a victory lap, man. It's it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's awesome to watch. I I tell you, God's got a weird sense of humor. Ain't that the truth? No question about it. Ain't that the truth? But you know, I, the reason they're making the movie about me is because I did not seek celebrity or stardom. I just wanted, you know, do my thing and get paid for it. You know. And, um, Were you at the Rolling Thunder review? Were you with Dylan during that no, tour? I didn't go to that. I was, I was working at the time. That sounds like the perfect spot for you. I'm surprised. <laughs> well, Dylan, Dylan, actually, Dylan kind of got the idea about putting, having white face on. Although he did a terrible job of it. Yeah, he, that's when he was doing uh, the white face. Right. right he, that, that came from me. I told him you should do that. In the Why movie, not? have you seen the movie, the the Scorsese movie about the the Rolling Thunder review? Uh, not really, no. 
Oh, oh you need to watch that because he does talk about how he got that idea from pantomime. From and I, I don't remember the exact story, but now I want to go back and see see how he describes where it came from because he talked about it. And um, uh, what, what's your name? Uh, oh my God, the 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 singer, the 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 other folk singer that he. Uh, no, no, no. Um, dark uh, hair. Why do we uh, uh, Maria, not Maria Mulder. Uh, oh my God, her name. I, she's one of the most famous ones. What's your excuse? Yeah. <laughs> a, a midlife moment. Uh, right. No, I, I've known Bobby since he was Bobby Zimmerman in the village. The guy who didn't sing very well but had some interesting poetry. You know, this is my... What he did there, that's my inspiration. When I decided how what I'm going to do next, I thought of him going to New York. Because they wouldn't take... I tried to sell my guitar and they wouldn't buy it. I'm like, so I'm stuck with this guitar. I'm going to New York City. And, uh from the Midwest <laughs> and uh, let Dylan be my inspiration see if I uh, pull it off I'll tell you New York first of all I've, I've been living in open space for so long I don't think I'd ever want to live in New York oh New me York. neither I'm just going place. I'm just going to make it man and then get the hell out <laughs> well that's what they all say but I, there are people in New York you'll find that are actually green in color and they've <laughs> never left Manhattan ever <laughs> But my home is San Diego, man. I'm I'm going to New York to get back to San Diego without having to be homeless there, because I can't do that again. Well, yeah, it's not a, the best time of year to be homeless again. I'll tell you. Well, not not in New York. In San Diego, it's always good. There's never a bad time. No, I'm talking. I mean, since you're going to New York. Yeah, no, it's I'm it's scary, but you know, I'm not running back to Hollywood again. I moved to Hollywood seven times and failed. I've only moved to. Uh, New York City once, so. Seth, let me let me say something to you, and maybe you know this already. But there is no such thing as as safe. <laughs> well, no safe trust thing. me, I know that. No such thing as security doesn't exist. It's a fable that's been handed down from one generation to the next. And when you truly give up on believing that, you're a lot freer. No, well, that's. That was part of my decision making to decide to go to New York instead of giving up here. Because it would be real easy to give up here. And I'm like, you know what? I got one more fight. I got one more shot. Well, that's good. And that's the city to do it. So. It sure is. That's what I started to say. It's a city of opportunity. That's what I'm saying. How to manipulate. And now I've proven myself as an artist. I'm going to give away all the art that I've done here, I'm giving away to thrift stores. And I will show up in New York with nothing but the clothes on, like a suitcase of clothes and a guitar. And a dream. That's great, man. And a dream. And a dream. But we're not the only ones. No, definitely not the only ones. <laughs> I love dreaming. I mean, I, I oftentimes dream, my dreams turn into revelations and revelations become reality. So. Well, that is the goal. <laughs> yeah. The, well, I'm proud of you, man. I mean, that takes a lot of guts to do something like that. But. I don't know how much guts and how much desperation, but either way, uh, either way, I'm on my way next, w- probably next week. Like this is happening soon. If you believe, if you believe in security, then desperation is what's going to happen. <laughs> you let that go altogether. Oh, all long ago, that. I let that go long go ago. <laughs> yeah, just go with that flow, man. <laughs> yep, tight. Yeah, New York's a great city. I miss it. You know, it's so cultured that they preserve two blocks, two square blocks in Hell's Kitchen the way it used to be, you know, the brownstones and the whole thing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's like, a, it's like a, a living museum kind of. Well, I'm going to kind of reconnect with my past, too, because the my artistic mentor who groomed me for the first seven years of my life and then abandoned me because I hit puberty lives in New York. So I'm going to get closure on the aunt who molested me and maybe uh, get a good ending to my story at the very least. Wow, so what are you going to tell your aunt, man? It's, qu- it's quite a story I'm not going to tell here in this grocery store. But, uh, or, or on this tape, ha ha ha. Oh no, it'll Who's be... T- the oh, believe me, that uh, there's no secrets in my life. I just don't want to shout I'm it out with this, you know. I'm driving you, Seth, I'm driving you. 
That's all I'm doing. Well, hey, I appreciate it, man. This reconnecting with you. I didn't even mean to say reconnecting. I didn't mean to. That was a slip of the tongue. Connecting with you has been has been a, a joy of my life. <laughs> well, thank you, Seth. I appreciate that. But you were around in the '60s. You were just called something else. Well, that's that's the part we'll never know. But uh, well, I think at the end, I think at the end of this journey for you, you'll know. Yeah, I'm hope I I I, I think we get answers at the end of the journey. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm in the midst of a flood of them. Have you, By the way, death is, death is the most beautiful woman you've ever seen, man. I'm, I was going to, that was my next question, if you were ready to see it that way, because that's... I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the Neil Cassidy on you, man. I, I picked up on what you're thinking, and, and, I, and I had almost an identical two dreams, where I, I didn't know I was dreaming, but that sitting at the end of my bed was the most beautiful, exotic, beguiling woman you've ever seen. I mean, your eyes would tear to see her. <laughs> Right? Yeah. And she's sitting at the end of my bed and she says, You know who I am? And I said, Yes, I do. She said, Let's go. And I said, Sorry, I'll take a rain check. I'm not ready yet. And I woke myself up laughing both times. But that's what it is. That you were just that's that's foreshadowing, man. Because when Audrey when my Audrey died, an hour before she went her kids were in the room with her. I, I stepped out and she was having private time with her kids and they said she looked at the end of her bed and said, not yet. Finished with her kids. They went into the next room. I came in to change her urine bag and when she sensed me there, that's when she went. How beautiful is that? I mean, it was the worst moment of my life, but it was also the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it's, it's pure poetry is what it is. Yeah. It's pure poetry. I mean, that, no, I, you, you I, can't not believe when you hear that. I mean, because that was it. She wasn't making that up. She, this isn't her telling a story later. This is witnesses when, saying. When you're going to die, you have nothing left but the truth. <laughs> That's, ain't that the beauty of it, though? Yeah. Yeah. Because truth is a lonely, a lonely place when you're, when you're here all alone with it. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean. That whole security, I hate to keep going back to security, but that's part of the problem with people believing that there is. I've seen giants topple. I have seen very, very wealthy people fall flat on their face. Yeah. No one's beyond it. Everyone has to deal with karma. I don't care who they yeah. are. That's well, that's the, be- that's the other beauty of it. <laughs> Knowing yeah. the karma's coming either way. <laughs> well, it's great, you know, that Trump has been telling all his followers not to wear masks. Well, that just means fewer Republicans. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's the other thing I'm going to do in New York. I'm going to the escalator where he announced his his presidency, and I'm going to yeah. videotape me walking up that escalator. It's the down escalator, but me like right, doing a whole up, yeah. a whole video going up the escalator, talking shit, and announcing my run for my third run for the presidency. I've already done it twice. And America rejected me, but I'm going to do it one more time for America. And that's what—that's one of the things I'm going to New York for, is to go up that escalator and get the fit, I footage. I love it. I love it. And then you got to go to the General Assembly at the UN. Oh, I'm... I'm let them know. Yeah. Oh, I mean, believe me, I got New York. Me and New York are going to have some fun with these cameras. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it sounds like it's going to be an exciting adventure, It, it will, one way or another, man. <laughs> Just remember that old Charlie Chaplin song, When You're Smiling. There you go. <laughs> there you go. That's the key, brother. That'll open all the doors you need opened up. Well, let's hope so, because I've seen a lot of closed doors in my life. Well, it just means you're on to something. <laughs> that's, that's what I keep telling myself. Well, there'd be no door if there wasn't something hiding behind it, right? Ooh, there it is, man. Wow. There it is. <laughs> well, there it is. <laughs> yeah. You can stick that in your car and eat Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you for that, man. Wow. <sighs> well, that's the one good thing about getting older. You do get smarter. Or yeah. at least you think you are. <laughs> you know? Well, you get wiser. I don't know about smarter, well, but wiser is... It's about experience. It's yeah. about experience. Well, that's what the that's wise the part is. Yeah. 
It's not about education. It's about experience. Yeah. What you know for sure through experience. That's what Jimi Hendrix was doing with his music. Are Literally. you experienced? Yeah. Deep question, man. Tell you, man. I shared one, one other thing that Keezy mentioned that I, I liked. Sometimes he said shit that I totally disapproved of, but he said, he said, ego is a good thing as long as you know your limitations. Nice. Yeah. Right? Yeah, of course. He said, you gotta, you gotta keep pressing up against those limitations. Yeah. That's life's journey itself, right? Yeah, yeah. But, but don't go beyond that line because most people got their philosophical selves six feet above them and they're down here dealing with reality. Exactly. Not as perfect as they'd like us to think. So, that, that's a very important thing to think about when you're freewheeling out there, brother. Yeah. Well, it just got crowded where I am, so I'm not going to be able to hear you in a minute. But we'll uh, we'll talk again. I, I only have access when I go, to, but um, I can do Wi-Fi in my car, which will be more private next time. So uh, once sure. this new snowstorm passes, I'll call you again. I'll send you those videos. All right, don't freeze. I got a, I got a roof at least for the moment. Hang on to it as long as you can. Yeah, man. there you go, man. All right, man. I love you, man. You want to go to New York in the spring, I <laughs> Well, believe me, if I if I my electricity goes off on the ninth, so I have a hard deadline of getting the hell out. <laughs> Jesus, man, what the hell's going on out here? Just it's insane, man. Yeah, if, I'm was, sorry to hear that. Yeah, when you if you when you hear the whole story someday, it'll blow your mind. <laughs> well, next time, yeah, let me know. I will, man. Talk to you later, right, man. I love you. Happy trails. Love you too. All right, bye bye. <laughs> How awesome is that? <laughs>